I'm almost positive you've heard this one before. Lumao, it's so funny that Snake has like <laughs> 10 stinger missiles in his ass. <laughs> Lumao. <laughs> How much Snake can carry has a surprisingly large effect on the rest of the game's design. It influences level design, the combat loop, and even the extent to which the player interacts with the actual environment. Today I'm Pliskin, and I want to look at carry capacity as a means of framing how an entire game is designed and balanced. Snake, it's me. I'm going to touch you. Before talking about Metal Gear Solid, let's identify the two methods I often see in games when it comes to carry capacity. So let's talk about Halo. Halo CE masterfully streamlined the FPS for console and controller. Aim Assist, a controller layout still used by most first-person shooters to this day, and of course, a two-weapon carry limit. A controller does not have as many buttons as a keyboard, so pressing Y to switch between every weapon you've ever picked up would be a chore and would really hamper your speed and mess up your combat reactiveness. So Bungie implemented a two-weapon limit. Not only does this just work better with your controller, but it also adds layers of strategy to the gameplay. For one, I pay much more attention to what my enemies are using. If I'm using an AR and kill a Needler using Grunt and see an Elite in the background, I'll swap my AR for that Needler, as it's much more effective against Elites. I'll also build mini combo loadouts. A rocket launcher and sniper combo may be better at long range, but a shotgun and plasma rifle combo is much more adept for interior combat. I'm constantly interacting with the sandbox and the environment because I need to constantly change up my limited loadout. Halo Reach takes this a step further with armor abilities. A grenade launcher is much more useful with a jetpack than with a close range armor lock ability. So while the Bungie era Halos made huge changes between entries, this core mechanic keeps the identity of Halo's combat loop consistent. I have my loadout, I scan the environment for how I need to change it on the fly, and then I repeat. Because of the two weapon carry limit, I constantly interact in a parasitic loop where I pillage and discard that which belongs to my enemies or the environment. But that's just one way of handling character capacity. In Devil May Cry, you don't take from your enemies. You acquire everything you need to win through the story, shops, or occasionally beating a boss or finding it in the levels. When you get a weapon, you keep it. Unless it gets replaced or destroyed in Nero's case. But with Dante, what you have is fixed. Even when you unlock the Devil Sword Dante, you can still use Rebellion and Sparta, having them both equipped at the same time, along with all your guns and all of your other melee weapons. So you may ask, doesn't having to switch between that many weapons on controller slow you down in a game all about combo speed? Yes and no. If you have a specific combo in mind, then yeah, having to cycle over unwanted weapons can mess you up but you can also just store them outside of your in-game inventory and carry only what you use. But if you're a bit more fluid and improvisational with your combos, then the game will reward you with style points for using whatever is next in your queue. So the loop becomes about familiarity with Dante's capabilities rather than an active sandbox to scan for. Okay, now let's talk about some Metal Gear. Similarly, there are two identifiable methods in regards to MGS carry capacity. The I'm carrying all of Shadow Moses in my ass approach, and the pretend carry limitations approach. It's a transition, honestly, that we see throughout the series. In MGS 1 and 2, your character carries literally everything they find at all times. 
and you gotta scroll through an entire armory when finding the weapon that you want to use. MGS3 we get this too, but it's limited. Only a set amount of items are scrollable. You see, some of them go into your magic excessive menu. <coughs> I mean backpack. There's a cool mechanic where carrying an excess of heavy stuff depletes your stamina faster. Cool concept, but it's kind of ruined by how I can just use the magic backpack to negate these effects. MGS4 switches out the magic backpack for a half-baked Drebin system. MGS5 almost adds in meaningful carrying mechanics. Snake can only carry three guns, one on his hip, one on his waist, and one on his back. Only sidearms and PDWs go on his hip. ARs, shotguns, and grenade launchers go on his waist. And power weapons like snipers, LMGs, and rockets go on his back. Sadly, the limited carry capacity doesn't really force you to interact with the world sandbox in a meaningful improvisational way, since you can call in whatever else you'd rather use at any time. Mother Base deliveries act as the new magic backpack. Ground Zeroes and Halo Combat Evolved have one major feature in common a single-purpose sandbox. Each weapon has its given purpose and does not overwrite any other option. With a limited, non-bloated sandbox, every weapon you carry, that the enemies carry, or that you find in the world becomes valuable. The rocket launcher makes the otherwise deadly Humvee manageable. Swapping out my Trank Pistol for a suppressed SMG may be smart in scenarios where a suppressed combat weapon isn't readily available. Swapping out a suppressed MRS-4 for a shotgun during an alert in the tight spaces of the admin building is always a good idea. These three spaces have so much more meaning when acquiring or changing weapons isn't supported by some kind of magic system. I was going to talk about hypothetical MGS games rebalanced around carry systems for each of the prior discussed methods, but I don't really need to do it for the Halo philosophy. Ground Zeroes already exists and nails the scan your environment and adapt your loadout to the situation approach. Honestly, I don't even need to go hypothetical for Devil May Cry's approach either, because we have Metal Gear Rising. Outside of niche scenarios, the game is more about how well you control Raiden rather than finding the right weapon for the job. Like in regards to full game balancing, Ground Zeroes and Rising are just peak Metal Gear. Which is exactly what makes it so cool that both of these protagonists share screen time in Ground Zeroes. That's it. That's it. Oh my god! There is, however, a really cool means of balancing carry weight I haven't brought up yet, that I would really like to see in a Metal Gear game. Resident Evil is almost entirely balanced around how much you can carry at a given time. Weapons, ammo, equipment, everything takes up space. If you could carry everything you could pick up at all times, the game would be a cakewalk. So, there's three ways Metal Gear Solid could model a carry weight system off of different Resident Evil games. A classic inventory and item box design could work very well in a Metal Gear Solid game. Imagine Snake is sneaking through Shadow Moses, six inventory slots. He carries a PAL card, a ration, his trusty SOCOM, a shaft grenade, SOCOM bullets, and he keeps a free slot. He gets to the Dark Wolf Caves and realizes without a FAMAS and night vision goggles, it'll be a ration consuming venture. At this point, Snake has to backtrack to an Otacon hiding spot, where after calling Otacon by Kodak, he can meet with him and trade out some items. Snake hands Otacon the excess SOCOM ammo and his shaft grenades in exchange for the FAMAS, some spare mags, and the night vision goggles. Now the legendary mercenary is ready for the caves.
Snake's chest rig could be made to function like Leon's attaché case. How much Snake could carry on him at one time would be dependent on how much he can jigsaw puzzle cram into his rig. So imagine, Venom taking a big OP suppressed sniper rifle with him. It's as powerful as ever, but now he can't hold as many grenades, his ammo count is going to be limited because there's less space for ammo, and his waist and hip guns have to prioritize being compact over being effective against the enemy if he still wants to occupy his three carry slots. In this scenario, you could even include the magic mother base deliveries, because now it doesn't matter what you can call in if you can't carry it. Shava, come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Okay. Shava, come on! Resident Evil 5 is cool because instead of save rooms and item boxes, you share or distribute weapons and ammo through a split screen friend's inventory. Imagine Snake and Raiden as two player split screen characters. Between them, there's an M4, PSG 1, a Stinger missile, an assortment of nades, rations, and Trank pistols and of course, the corresponding ammo for each. Each character only has 9 slots, like in Resident Evil 5. To be able to fully utilize the tools at their disposal and have space for special items, they decide to split the load of all this stuff between them. Snake takes a pistol, all the nades, and the M4, plus ammunition. Raiden takes a pistol, PSG-1, and Stinger missiles, plus their ammunition. Now each player has a team-based role to play. Snake handles infantry combat, and Raiden handles boss fights and niche scenarios. If the player plays solo, then the AI will prioritize holding healing items, specialty items, and ammunition, and act more like a mule for the player. In short, how you carry things drastically affects how your game plays, so an appropriate amount of thought should go into this. Now objectively, there's nothing wrong with having magic boxes to encourage player agency, but some well thought out restrictions could really amplify gameplay experiences. But what do you think? Have you ever thought about the role a carry capacity system has on, you know, the your favorite game, let's say? Like, tell me what your favorite game is and tell me how it's affected by carry capacity. Anyways, this has been Pliskin, over and out. This is Solid Snake. Hey, subscribe to Pliskin Boy. God damn it. You heard him.